Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the teaching and learning call. Today is Wednesday, August 21st, 2019. And it's just before back to school for many of us, and maybe some of us are already there. Um, so if you are, um, wishing you good luck and, and sanity and all those good things. Um, hope it's going well. We've got a few announcements this morning. Um, we were talking on the um, Sakai Virtual Conference planning call last week, I think, and wanted to ask the group whether or not increasing the um, registration fee would be acceptable to folks in the community. Any thoughts on that? Any reactions, positive or negative? And I'm not sure how much we were thinking of, but right now it's $50 for individuals and 500 for groups. Maybe something like 75 for individuals and 600 for groups. I don't know that that would be a deal breaker for my team, but uh, other teams may have um, issues with it. Right, and I didn't think it was going to be very um, a big deal for us either. Although in some ways uh, you you guys are outliers, you know, and it's a it's an interesting question to pose of others. I mean, you know, obviously it doesn't it doesn't affect me either. Um, yeah. It seems like it's a it's a small increase. I mean, maybe maybe the thing to do would be, you know, to. What if, what if there were, you know, some sort of a, like a donation level? I mean, so this, this adds complexity, right? But if there were some sort of a, of a tiered registration fee so that you could, you know, or, or the ability to, you know, for an, if your institution has the means to be able to, uh, you know, participate at a higher fee, but not require people to be at that point, you know, this year when they may not have budgeted for it. Right. Um, well, not, isn't there a an option when you're registering to to donate more money? Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Okay. I guess I was muted and uh -huh. hear me. I was unmuted on the on Big Blue button, but the mute button on my um, oh. headphone cord got hit. I think my dog did that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, Blame the pooch. Come on. Yeah. Now. Well, she was under there messing with the cord. Oh. <laughs> um, anyway, um, yes, there is a donation option right now in the form, the registration form. So we can make that a little more prominent in the form. Um, and yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, we it's not as though we're itching to raise prices just to raise prices. We just right. wondered if, you know, people would want to um, raise more money because we were talking about, you know, yeah. different and creative options for allocating the money to projects. Right. So um, we wanted to get some feedback on, on what people thought about the registration cost. But, but yeah, I think you're right. I think maybe just posing it as a donation option yeah keeping the fees the the same but making that more prominent and encouraging that a little bit more mm -hmm. yeah and it, might also, it might also be worthwhile to say all right we plan in 2020 to increase the fees to x and that least people can be aware and you know and also you know making sure that you double down on, on the messaging why the donation option well actually you'd be supporting the advancement of the platform Right. right. And to Terry's point, no, we are not paying the presenters. We're raising money for projects is what we're doing. So, you know, that's really the goal. Yeah, I understand some folks are paying out of pocket. That's so. So I think the donation option is is the way to approach that for now. Thank you guys for your input. That's really helpful. I see a couple of other announcements here. Do you want to take those, Wilma? Yep. 
um, the call for proposals is open. I sent out a message, um, I believe it was yesterday, with the link to the proposal um, submission form. The website, um, we're just doing some last minute tweaks. So the website for this year's conference has not yet been published. Hoping to get that up by the end of the week. But, um, but the form is live, so you can go directly to the proposal submission form if you have any ideas. And, um, and I encourage you to, you know, submit early so we can get the, uh, the program um, up for people to peruse as soon as possible. So um, if you know folks on your campuses that are doing interesting things, um, please be sure to, to get the word out and encourage them to submit. Um, if you've done a, a presentation at another conference and you want to maybe, you know, re do a reprise of the, the session for the virtual conference. It's, it's, uh, it might be a different group of folks. So, um, so repeat performances are, are encouraged. And um, we actually added a new track this year called Teaching with Sakai, which is more of a how-to track. So we're encouraging people to submit um, presentations for more of a kind of a workshoppy type. Um, this is how you use a particular tool or feature. Um, so we're hoping to, to get a little bit of momentum behind that track. Um, another up, uh, announcement I have is the JIRA upgrade. We're actually upgrading again. We upgraded um, a few weeks ago, but we couldn't go to the um, version 8 because of our uh, MySQL um, database version wasn't supported. So we had to upgrade the database first before we could upgrade JIRA to a more recent version. So we're going to be scheduling the JIRA upgrade um, and that's going to happen at 1 a.m. tomorrow morning. It should last an hour or two. It should be fairly quick. Um, so if you notice any changes in JIRA after that, um, please let me know. And I'll be sending out a, an announcement to all the lists um, shortly. I didn't have a chance to do that before the call. Thanks, Wilma. I um, had an item come up here at UVA. Um, some of our C-level folks are have gotten wind of the Ally product that Blackboard has created. Um, and so the question I have are, is, are there others in the community who are interested in this product? It's going to take some work in the Sakai backend to be able to use it and integrate it. And I was just wanting a chance to reach out and see if any of you have um, seen it or are interested in it. This would be a very nice accessibility feature to offer in Sakai. Just to, to note, Tricia, um, Longside had initial conversations with uh, the Blackboard Ally folks, uh, many of whom are former Sakai folks, yeah. about doing integration. So it was it was deemed at that time to be, you know, too pricey for them because they, you know, they didn't have the, the client base to support it. You mm -hmm. know, but maybe the, the tide has turned a little bit. So we could certainly, you know, recap whatever we learned from that conversation if that would be useful. Okay. Maybe in another conversation for those who are interested. Um, yeah, so I, I don't, I know they did mention that and at the time they weren't, that they just pretty much said what you just said. They couldn't, they couldn't afford that then. But if, if institutions are willing to contribute to that effort, then it could happen. So, thanks for that, Josh. Maybe I'll touch base with you later and, and see where we're at, see what was discussed before. And you have an announcement also, Josh? Yes, a very brief one. So, um, I'm starting to organize roadmap discussions looking at uh, uh, the platform for 2021 through 2023. So, that would be uh, an effort to take a look at our current three-year roadmap, update years two and three, and add an additional year. So um, if uh, folks are interested in contributing, please write me offline and we can talk. And by contributing, you mean new features or? Oh, right, that's, that, that's true. I, I, we, we use that word in multiple ways. I meant, uh, you know, for contributing ideas to the conversation. Okay, gotcha.
Sounds good. All right, we have some JIRAs that um, several people have submitted that they want to discuss. And I know Tiffany isn't here to discuss um, the couple that she submitted, so we might skip those um, and do those in the JIRA Palooza, which is our next meeting. But um, the first one has to do with weighted items within weighted categories in the grade book. And let me copy that link and paste it in uh, so you can go take a look at that. Um, I don't remember who submitted that. That was me. Oh, okay. Um, so, yeah, so this one is one that originally, it was one of those grade book two features that um, wasn't incorporated into grade book NG. And, um, and we've had a client um, ask us about addressing this um, feature request. So we were looking at ways um, in which to, to kind of what the UI should look like for implementing something like this and also just get some general community feedback um, to you know, make sure that this is something that the community wants. So basically what, um, what this feature request is about is allowing weighted items within weighted categories in the gradebook. Right now you can't really do that. You can have a weighted category and the way you weight items is you make them more points. Um, so one thing, you know, one assignment might be 200 points and another would be 100 points and the 200 point assignment counts more because it has more points. So that's how the workaround that currently exists for that. Um, this would allow you to actually have things all worth the same um, number of points or different number of points depending on, on how you have it set up. Um, and they could be worth either um, the same percent within the category um, or different um, weights. So you, know, you could weight something twice as much even though it's out of 100. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I've included some um, screen uh, images here of, of some mock-ups of what this might look like. Um, if you look at the item weighting setup, it's, it's actually the second um, option there, second image there. Um, I was thinking that it would happen in the setup area is where you would actually configure this. And if you see there's a, an item weighting checkbox next to the keep highest, lowest um, items. And mm -hmm. if you recall, when you check one of those items, a new column appears for the you know, keep or drop um, operation. Mm -hmm. So the item weighting would only show up if you check that box and then you get the extra column <clears throat> and I was thinking to also get a collapsible list of things within that category so that you could then enter a weight for each thing um, and this one is is just showing um, how you know it would give you it would check to make sure that you've got them totaling up to a hundred kind of like it mm -hmm. it checks when you have weighted categories and you could also set them, you know, different weights as long as they total to 100. Um, and then if you go to the next one uh, where it shows kind of the spreadsheet view, mm -hmm. I was thinking that you might want this information in that view as well. So I just added an item with the um, percent weight in, in brackets after the category percent weight in brackets, which already exists. Um, for any items that are weighted within a weighted category. Mm. And let's see, on the, I think it was the first screen image in the list there, it shows just the individual um, edit gradebook item. And I thought in this screen, it would actually, it would show you if there's an item weight associated with something, but it wouldn't let you change it from here because I was kind of, thinking that you would need to see all of the things in a category to be able to tinker with the weights, um, particularly if you want them to equal 100. So it would be kind of hard to set 
uh, the item weight within a, a weighted category independent of the other items in the category. So Ooh. that was why it's a read-only sort of thing. And it says in that little info below, I go to gradebook settings to modify the weight uh, within the category. So anyway, so that was mm -hmm. kind of what I was thinking as how we might implement this. Um, I noticed that um, Laura Sierra, I don't know if she's on the call today, she had commented that, um, that we're getting close, but that there were two parts that their faculty did um, which that you know they had the option to um, and she showed a screen grab from gradebook to weight items equally or weight by points um, personally I don't understand how weight item by points is any different from what we already have right now so I didn't quite, I was hoping she would clarify that um, so not um, today, but, if, yeah. if I may um, I think I think you're right. I think that is pretty much what what we have now. Is but but it it defaults to that option. That's the only option you have is to weight item by points. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, it would be nice if and uh, it's not clear in in your screenshots if this would be option to have it automatically do weight items e equally. Um, yeah, yeah. That's kind of what I was thinking. That the default for item weighting would be it would weight them equally. Right, because that way, change. if you add a new item, you don't have to go in and manually change all those numbers again. Right. You know, so if I go from three to four, okay, now I've got another thing that's not weighted. I have to go in and change everything to twenty-five percent. Right. I don't. I don't want to have to do that. Right. So if you don't start, you shouldn't have to worry about it. Yeah. But if you do, you have to. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like if you go in and modify them so they're no longer equally weighted, then anytime you add something new, you then have you to. have to. Sure. And that's fine. Yeah. I, I get that. Mm -hmm. But having the option to have the system do it automatically, um, that was something that was in the old gradebook too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. We can definitely um, kind of surface that functionality um, so people understand that that's what's happening. But yeah, that was kind of what I was thinking that the waiting option would do okay. behind the scenes. So I guess that needs to, should that be clarified in the JIRA itself or is that already in there? I had a comment to that effect on the JIRA, but um, I'll make sure that I note somewhere. Yeah, it goes up in the description. Um, and all yeah. The letters right. For the developer who works on this. Um, yeah, so, so what do you need from us other than yay or nay? Well, does this work? Is this something that you guys, A, want, and B, is this the correct way to do it? Want, yes, and it seems like a reasonable procedure. Yeah, I agree. Do you want us to vote or does, um, or does that help at all? No, that, that definitely helps. I mean, I guess we could do the old, you know, if anybody objects <laughs> sort of thing. Um, and and if you know, silence, silence is consent. Right. Um, but yeah, right. if anybody has other thoughts on this, if you want to speak, it, speak now before happen. we estimate the JIRA. Right. <laughs> I think it's a good feature. It'll be useful. I know a lot of our faculty run into this issue because they do assign different grade points anyway um, to weighted categories for items. Yep. Anyway, anyhow, I think I think it would be helpful. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you guys for the input. And if you have any other thoughts afterward, feel free to comment on the JIRA itself. Um, so I'm going to skip down to Charles's 42046. Let me paste that into the chat for everybody um, so we can go look at that um, since he has asked so nicely to make sure we cover that and that one you want to lead us through that one Charles sure Th this is one we battered around back and forth a couple times um, and so it was something that um, ISU had um, committed some some of our development hours with Longsight for, um, and at the time, um, 
long site said that that they could um, that the the funds that we had kind of already committed would cover um, doing it as um, putting the showing total points um, available um, for the instructor to be able to see to, to make sure they had all their items in the grade book and everything added up to their the total correct number of points um, to do it in the the site order or the I'm sorry the item um, order screen um, but there were some objections to putting it there and, and there are some folks that would rather see it as a separate tab and so I guess you Dayton has been doing some work on that um, that's that last um, item I th or the last image that was put on I think um, what's what's oh I see when it says you Dayton underscore grade book underscore right. is that it yeah Oh, and so a, a little modal window pops up when you click on something, I guess. And right. It shows you this summary of all, all the points. Right. So I guess they're doing it as a modal. Tiffany was suggesting that it, it should be a separate tab, I think. Oh, I don't know. I don't, I don't mind a modal, but. Wasn't Tiffany's point that modals uh, tend to be less accessible? Yeah, I think that's why she right. didn't okay. like the model. Hmm. Um, yeah, too bad she's not on the call today, but. Um, oh, yeah, Christina also kind of recommended a separate tab as well. For the same reason. <clears throat> well, part of it was just user interface. She. She was thinking that um, the going up to that item, if we renamed it as item summary, if that was intuitive enough for people to look in the right place for it. It might. I mean, even if they yeah, didn't. Yeah, I'll, I'll just say, even though I put in the, the concept of the putting it in an item order, I'm not necessarily married to that concept. Mm -hmm. So it won't offend me at all if you guys want to do a, a separate tab. We just I'm need fine. Some, yeah, yeah. direction on, on what the community prefers. I'm fine with either option. It, I, you know, it doesn't bother me whether it's a, a separate tab or, or on the item order page. I would be fine with either option. Um, I just don't know if the if putting it in as a new tab would kind of um, be a cost overrun, as it were, because um, we don't have an estimate for what that would involve. So I have a question regarding, you know, consistency in UI. I mean, I'm, one of the things that, mm -hmm. that Twitch is doing is coming up with uh, recommendations for situations like this, and the recommendations haven't been finalized, but it makes me wonder as we think about this, you know, what are our developing best practices for, you know, creating this kind of workflow in UI at this point. Yeah, maybe we, uh, hmm. and I don't think anybody from the Switch project is on the call. There is actually a UX call right after this one. So if anyone is able to attend that, it's in uh, room three at um, 11. Yeah. Unfortunately, I have a conflict. I have another meeting at 11, so I won't be able to, to go to that call today. I was planning on attending that call, so I could bring this up. Would you? I think that would be useful, Charles, if you could do that. Okay. Um, okay, great. We need to pause now and move to our main pre presentation for the day. And if we have time at the end to return to discuss any more JIRAs, we will. But um, let me introduce to you Jamie Lynn Bishop, everyone, uh, from Marist, who is going to have a repeat of her presentation from Open Aperio on Innovate Plus Beyond <coughs> the Course. So, Jamie Lynn, I'm going to turn it on over to you and ask everybody else to please mute your microphones. And thank, oh, thank you. Thank you, Tricia. Yeah. 
And good morning. And I'm hoping this won't take that long that we can address some of the JIRAs that are still out there because I, I, I think it's very important to do so. Okay. So everybody can see my presentation, correct? Yes. Okay. And you can hear me just fine. Okay. <laughs> All right. So good morning. I'm Jamie Lynn Bishop, and I joined the digital education team um, at Marist about two years ago as an instructional designer. And I work closely with instructional technologists and the LMS developers here to um, help faculty members create dynamic and well-designed courses in Sakai. The nature of um, this conversation is to discuss our latest fellowship program at Marist, at the beginning stages of um, an online course that we created. And we entitled it um, Innovate and Beyond Your Online Course, AYOC, and it was created for the accepted fellows. And the learning modules within the course are aimed at teaching the fellows how to improve student learning across um, academic disciplines. And according to several studies, the trend in higher education uh, institutions is that colleges continue to move towards online education to attract a uh, segment of students that value the flexible learning environments. And recently at Marist, uh, Marist College had implemented, um, I'm so sorry, I just lost my... <laughs> Recently at Marist College, they implemented a grant program for their online summer courses to be offered at a significant discount. So um, Marist's new grant program coupled with the new generation of students using technology in their everyday lives impacted the need for the Marist teaching staff to be able to use Sakai to its fullest potential. For this reason, there was a need for, exi for existing and new online courses to infuse technology facilitated educational innovations at Marist. And our digital education department spearheaded this um, Innovate and BYOC fellowship program to support part-time faculty with online design and teaching. This program was developed to provide hands-on training and explain best practices for online uh, teaching and learning. This year, our board had approved a new strategic plan with innovation as one of the three uh, main categories that faculty and staff should strive to meet. And I'm sorry, uh, the, the stop sharing button is right underneath my <laughs> advance to the next oh. slide button. <laughs> no worries. We can so, still see it. Okay. So let me just make sure I moved. Okay. So I'm moving ahead. There we go. So many of our full-time faculties um, were unsure how to define educational innovation and were nervous to try new ideas on their own without support. So we felt our adjunct were struggling even more. So our adjunct faculty do not have the support level that our full-time um, faculty do. This led us to design an innovation framework that uh, was both collaborative and supportive um, specifically for our adjunct faculty. And our adjunct faculty now make up a majority of higher education instructors in, um, nationwide, yet they seem to be left out when planning professional development opportunities or when paid course building opportunities arise. Our department feels that rec recognition and reward for professional developments is important and will impact our part-time faculty's engagement in this program. The Innovate and uh, BYOC program is designed for the Marist adjuncts who, who wish to improve their face-to-face -face, um, courses with an online enhancement or redesign an existing online course in Sakai. The program focuses on innovation that fosters uh, student success. So now innovation is a concept that challenges uh, many colleges and universities. And how can we inspire our adjunct faculty who feel underappreciated and underpaid to use innovative tools as they teach their courses and improve um, student outcomes? So first, everything's on a delay. <laughs> so first, let's define uh, innovation. If you ask Google for uh, innovation definition, it is less than helpful. It comes up with over 300 million results with thousands of definitions. Its own definition is pretty much useless. It's quote, the, act, the action 
of the action or process of innovating. So we turn to the traditional source for a definition, the Oxford Dictionary, um, with their answer being, quote, make changes in something established, especially by introducing new methods, ideas, or products. So how does our department define innovation? Our definition of innovation is based on that we need to redefine what we already have, know, and do by investing the time, skills, and energy required to gain the benefits of quality courses and student success. In other words, innovation is, a not, is not about finding new ideas, but instead focusing on the good ideas that already exist and implementing them. Oh. There we go. I hit that button. So now I'm going to move a little bit quicker. <laughs> so we created this little chart. It's our building blocks. Um, the header is our definition to innovation, which is redefining what we already know, have, and do. The left side shows what the faculty invest. Some have the time, but they don't have the energy, or they may have the ideas, but maybe they don't have the skills and the knowledge. The middle section indicates the change in perspective to have the uh, capability of being agile and flexible in the digital environment. And we need to keep in mind that our students are always changing, so we must always change as well. And the right side shows outcomes. So we've simpl simplified this even more because it's not a path, it's more of a cycle. So we encourage our faculty to think big, start small, but don't stop so they stay on this cycle. Um, innovation is not a means to an end. It's just establishing that mindset of investing the time and the energy to redefining and redesigning and then creating uh, this change and continuously taking the small steps and soon they have the big picture. Our department is committed to leading the promotion and support of technology facilitated innovation. We feel that helping the faculty use the technology facilitated innovation will enrich the student learning experience. So a little bit about the program. Now, through the funding of this strategic initiative, we were able to offer 10 adjunct faculty members a fellowship to take an online innovative course. And um, they participated in a design workshop and this allowed them to have one-on-one -on -one time with the instructional designers and instructional technologists um, on campus to create their innovative course designs. And by offering the adjuncts the opportunity to collaborate by supporting them as they try these new ideas, um, several innovative ideas emerged. And after they took this online course, then they attended um, an on-the-ground on class workshop, which allowed them to utilize all the all the, um, the LTI tools that we have available to integrate with um, Sakai. And then they also um, created this course design and sent it in to us to review. And then we used the Quality Matters rubrics to, to give them the seal, the seal of um, approval. And as you can see on the left-hand side, we were able to, we have seven schools here at Marist and we were able to get um, four school uh, adjuncts from several of the schools to participate. And here were the expectations. Uh, first, they had to participate in the three-week online course called Innovate Your Online Course. And they, they had to compose an online course design and um, the online course took three weeks for them to complete. Then they participated in a two-day intensive workshop and they had to submit their course design plan through an internal quality matters review. And then they had to participate in, and they returned back to campus to participate in a feedback session. And then lastly, now we're starting to schedule the faculty showcase seminars that they'll come and attend during the school year to um, discuss with faculty other, other things that, what they've implemented in their class. And here's just a breakdown of the schedule. And um, we helped the, fel the fellows customize the structure of their course. So they learned a lot about the lessons tool and how to deliver course content um, and through their facilitating course structure. 
we focused on how to streamline um, the learning pathway, guiding the students to one location for task completion. Students were able to, um, students will be able to look forward to improved course organization and simplified navigation. Uh, the fellows will minimize the confusion by keeping the content and activities in one place. They will rethink how they originally organized their courses, and when they created their course design plans, they re redefine how um, they have done things in the past. By investing their time to streamline their courses, they will provide an innovative digital learning environment for their students. And through our online course, um, the fellows were, will be introduced to how careful course design can be can help them uh, overcome teaching challenges cultivate significant um, student learning, and they will learn how to build their components of their online course and create detailed course design plans. And the intensive workshop series um, is a two-day professional development event designed to share tools that are useful to, to transform their courses. And during the workshop, they will participate in small and large group activities as well as independent activities. And collaboration throughout the workshop will allow the adjuncts to try innovative technologies while receiving support and encouragement from their faculty members and from our team. And then here uh, on the screen is our, our two-day, uh, the schedule broken out. And then during these two jam-packed days, we will work with each fellow to produce introduction videos for their courses. We will also help them create high quality videos by using Powtoon, Panopto, and our green screen studio. And then uh, their course design will include learning goals, um, assessments, activities, instructional strategies, and other components. And their course design will be submitted for the Quality Matters um, internal review on the last day of the two-day workshop. And then after participating in the two-day workshop, fellows will participate in a feedback session. And the feedback session will be held to discuss the advantages and uh, challenges regarding the program. They will also take part in a testimonial video, and uh, we're looking forward to hearing all their aha moments. Again, the program stresses that uh, the innovative courses, the innovative course isn't about finding more ideas, but rather recognizing the good years, good ideas that they already have, and um, using the tools to get the ideas across. And the process of changing what they've always done to create an innovative course can be both agonizing and fascinating. The planning, time, and energy invested can be frustrating for some, but thrilling for others. And in the end, when the adjuncts uh, create a fresh, up-to-date course that they have built, they're going to feel a sense of achievement. And I've kind of been stumbling throughout this whole presentation because when I was out at Aperio, we hadn't started this program yet, but now we finished it. So I kind of kept going back and forth from past to present. So. Here's some pictures um, from the two-day workshop. And then um, lastly, like I said, after the program, which we're, we're in the midst of now, the fellows are given the opportunity to present their work at the Center for uh, Teaching Excellence, and they'll do a faculty showcase seminar um, partnered with our department. And our faculty showcase seminar series allowed the faculty to showcase their research and best practices on various topics while using technology integration and different types of learning theories. And since the fellows um, will participate in the faculty showcase seminar, they will help raise awareness about our professional learning opportunities and share innovative ideas with other members across our um, institution. And that is my presentation. Um, like I said, I, I knew it was going to be quick. <laughs> uh -huh. no, that was really interesting. Um, Thank you. I have a couple of questions for okay. you. So, so it sounds like you had your first co cohort this summer go through this new Correct. program. Yes. And what kind of feedback did you get from the Actually, fellows? let me... I just minimize this screen um, and let me open up. I took some uh, 
clips. Let's see. I have some videos, but I haven't gotten to the to the point that uh let me bring this up so you can see it. Okay. Um oh and where'd it go? <laughs> <laughs> where'd it go? Here you go. So um so here's a few things from some of the professors. So if you care about learning and you care about the students um, and how you present your information, they, they've strongly recommended the course. Um, a lot of them loved the use that, I mean, the hands-on use that we had them using the video and all the different software that we have in our, our uh, lab. And um, just even just the collaboration between the, the different adjuncts and saying, hey, in my class, I did this and oh, great, I could do it in my class this way. That was that that was amazing. Mm -hmm. Just the collaboration. Absolutely. Um, and just making their sites more interactive. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, a lot of them, you know, just um, creating those Powtoon videos on just introducing themselves or um, some of them never thought to use Prezi as, you know, a way of navigating through their, their syllabus. Oh, so that was a, that was a, a, a good good idea. Yeah. And uh, you mentioned that they submit their um, redesign to a quality matters review that is local. So I assume you, you guys at the, are you at the Center for Teaching Excellence as well? Uh, well, our department falls, we- Under that, okay. We're partnered, yeah. yeah um, I, yep, they do, and it's an internal, so it's not that it goes to QM um, mm -hmm. externally, it stays within Marist. So you have some certified QM- Yes. Who, who do that. Yes. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, what other questions do folks have? Jennifer says, this is great. I love that you reach out to adjuncts. Yes, that is very cool and a, and a not very well supported group of folks. So. Not at all with their full-time jobs and then they're coming in and they have to you know, make these interactive courses. And um, we they, they tend to, they're they're missed. There's a stepchildren, you know. They're they're yeah. left out. <laughs> stepchildren, right? <laughs> no, no offense to any redheads. Right. Yes. Um, <laughs> this is it, it's such a cool idea. And so this is your first cohort that went through. It sounds like it was really successful. How many folks did you have in this cohort? Um, well, when we when I applied for the strategic initiative for the funding, we were told that we had to cap out at ten, and we had exactly oh. ten. Okay. Yes. And then I assume you're going to somehow share this out uh, with various groups around the university to sort of promote it and let folks know the advantages of doing it and you'll continue. Are you just going to do this in the summers? Um, um, we're actually just starting to discuss that now. I know that we've offered the online course just to the, the majority of folks here if they wanted to take it, but we haven't gone to the step, the next steps of having the, the two day intensive um, workshop. Right. Um, and so forth, but. Gotcha. Wow, this is really very cool. I took a screenshot of your um, two-day workshop program that looked really, really good. Oh, thank you. Don't mind us um, borrowing some of your great ideas. Not at all. Um, let's see, any other questions from our attendees today? For Jamie Lynn, is anybody else doing anything like this at your own institutions? Well, not directly like that, but we have um, some web, some seminars and such for incoming instructors, frequently adjunct, to work with them on setting up their Sakai sites and giving them ideas on how to develop the best um, online out outreach to their students possible. Yeah. I do, I'm just sitting here wondering about um, 
uh, so summertime, you've got adjuncts who were hired before the summer. Mm -hmm. And um, and I know a lot of, maybe not a lot, but new faculty do get hired on and they start in the fall. Um, are you guys thinking about opening this up to tenured faculty or, or people who aren't adjuncts? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yes. We Like I said, we ran the online program again since mm -hmm. we did it for the adjuncts and um, it was mostly full-time faculty. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Did sign up. That. Yeah. But um, yeah, we're actually we're still hiring full time faculty now when we start classes mm -hmm. on Monday. Right. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> so so do you think you're going to offer this during the semester or just between semesters? I think mostly between semesters because we'll do it. We have like a January Institute, so we'll probably do it then as well, because most oh, yeah. faculty are so overwhelmed um, yeah. for a couple of months. And nobody has three weeks to devote. Take well, their own class. <laughs> yeah, maybe they do, but it, <laughs> it would be a hard, hard sell. Absolutely. That's really cool. Well, thank you so much. I really thank appreciate you. it that you joined us. And uh, this is a great topic. I certainly learned a lot. Really appreciate your time. Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So we have... 11 minutes and maybe we can squeeze one more JIRA in. I, uh, Wilma, how about your 42019 on converting Samago settings from accordions to tabs? Do you want to talk about that? Sure. That. So, um, so this one has come up and it's, if you scroll down, there's a whole lot of discussion on the JIRA in the comments. Um, it's come up several times and there's been a lot of sort of different opinions on what the best way to present this information is. Um, so the core team was um, was discussing this particular JIRA and they didn't really want to make the call because from a technical perspective, you could do it either way, but they're not sure what the end user preferences. Um, you know, we want to keep consistency in mind across the system, um, but we also want to keep, you know, usability in mind. I think part of the problem is that the Samago settings page is, there's just so much information there. It's hard to make it digestible in any format. <laughs> Um, but uh, so the, the settings approach or in, in tabs is one that you Dayton had implemented locally and they're looking to contribute that back to the community branch. Um, but again, uh, the core team wasn't sure whether or not they should accept the um, contribution because it is so different from the, way, the accordions that exist now. And the accordions incidentally were redone not too long ago to try to um, make that page a little more usable. So um, we wanted to put it to this group and also to the UX group to see if um, if there's a, a consensus among the community members on which layout they prefer. Do you know, do you happen to know if Dayton did any kind of usability testing or review of this? I don't know. I know they've been using it in production um, for a little while, actually, and uh, it was just something that they had local, and, and lately they've been trying to, because they had a whole bunch of, of custom things that they had built um, locally that weren't in the community code, so lately they've been trying to contribute all of those back, right. and, um, and so, I mean, I guess they got good feedback from their local you know, faculty, but I don't know if they did any formal testing. I don't think there's anybody mm -hmm. here from Dayton who could speak to that. Right, I don't think so. Do they typically attend the core team calls? Um, sometimes, not mm -hmm. all the time, but um, especially if they have a pull request in the works, sometimes they attend. Yeah. Gosh, I don't really have a good sense about this. Does anybody else? have any reaction to it? <clears throat> I, you know, I'm, I'd be really curious 
to do a usability study and comparing the two versions and to get feedback from, you know, regular user types. Right. Yeah, that's a really good suggestion. Maybe we could do some A-B testing on this before a decision is made. Yeah. Because I really just don't have a good sense on which which format is yeah. better. And, and that was that was the core team's reaction as well. They're like, well, yeah. we don't know. <laughs> so let's let's yeah, let right. the community <laughs> tell us. Um, so if anybody has any strong opinions one way or the other, please do speak up. Yeah, comment in the Jira if you do, please, and Hello. or reach out to Wilma or attend the core team call next week and chime in there. It, this almost kind of goes back to the same thing about, you know, yeah, and we what, were going to put it on the switch, agenda yeah, as well. Of what, okay, what, what's the, the yeah. paradigm that we want to have going forward to be yeah. consistent? Okay, because we might want to think about doing this with other tools, then we want to yeah. figure out and make sure that we've got the best thing for that could be used for all tools. Like I can see doing something like this to the assignment settings page too, because that's that's pretty long and getting kind of complex too. Right. Yeah. My two well, cents. Hopefully, hopefully I, I contacted Sean to put this one on the UX agenda as well. So hopefully that group will have a chance to take a look at it and um, and maybe they'll have some more, you know, concrete um, recommendations as to which that they, they think is the preferable way to go. Yeah, that that's a really good thought. Um, so, I, Charles, you're attending that meeting today, and I know uh, Wilma won't be able to, and neither will I. Do you, do you want to take this up with them and maybe give us an update next time? Sorry, I got distracted by an email. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's that time of year. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. I will, I'll try to join late if my other room wraps up early, but I can't guarantee wait, wait. it. So. Hold on. Let right. me, let me double check one thing. What week is that? Okay. That's the week of the, f okay. Yeah. I should be able to do that. It's a good thing it's not the following week because that could be a problem because <laughs> we get to move to a new building. Oh boy, right now I'm going to start every year semester. Yeah. Thanks, Charles. Yep. All right. That's excellent. I think that's all we're going to do today. We have five minutes, but um, to give these other jurors um, due justice for discussion, uh, we'll just add those to the Jirapalooza meeting on September 4th. Um, on September 18th, we're going to have a grading UI update from Wilma. And on October 2nd, Tiffany and John Buckingham from Pepperdine are going to give us an auto groups or show us an auto groups prototype. So um, if any of you have other topics that you would like to see in the near future in October and then of course November we're going to have our Sky virtual conference so we won't meet that day um, that which was the 6th I believe of November but um, please let me know or Wilma or Matt Burgess who is not on the call today but most of you know him uh, any one of us feel free to reach out with um, suggestions for upcoming topics for our meetings and with that, I'm going to let everybody go a little early unless there are any other questions or announcements. All right, folks, thank you so much. And we'll see you next time. <coughs> Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.